welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining this week are Andy Parsons, Ellie Taylor and Rob Beckett, Josh Widdicombe, Hugh Dennis and Milton Jones. We saw it around, called it This is the Answer, What is the Question? On the board are six categories. <coughs> Ellie, which category would you like? Um, science, please. Science, yes. Whoop! Science! <laughs> One of our team. Your category is science. The answer is seven months. What is the question? Is it how old Princess Charlotte will be when the Daily Mail start commenting on her weight? <laughs> <laughs> is it how long does my nephew think I've been playing hide-and-seek with him? <laughs> Is it how long until Seth Blatter gets bombed in prison? <laughs> is it uh, how old is Jack Whitehall when he first appeared on this programme? <laughs> is it if I get a 30 second advert before a YouTube video, how long does that feel? <laughs> <laughs> I can skip it in time! You can't always skip, you can't always skip! Some, of them, skip. Some of them you have to prove you're over 18 as well, it's a nightmare. <laughs> Is it, if I was in charge, what would be the prison sentence for saying chillax? <laughs> Is it, how long does it take to get to Glasgow on a megabus? <laughs> yes, a megabus. I am the accepted As if face. you've ever gone on a megabus. I'm, I'm on every megabus page. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Is it, how long it takes Dara to start a sentence? Uh... What? <laughs> What you, you, you got? Britain's Got Talent now, is that what you're doing? <laughs> so actually, if I really haven't got over that Britain's Got Talent no, thing, you it brought go. it up Just out of nowhere two weeks in a row, I Dara. I would continue to until they hunt that man down and kill him. <laughs> right. It wasn't the fact that they did, it was the fact that it was a snippet that they chose in, the, in all the acts. They said, oh, they take one second from each act, and his was just him going, ah, <laughs> and a number underneath, ah, oh, they don't need any, no, 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 I know, but... There's the, more to me than that. Is there? No. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <seemingly> not. <laughs> is it to avoid suspicion, how long is Mo Farah planning to run his next 10,000 metres in? <laughs> <laughs> OK, can we have the correct answer, please? Is it how long it took for me to get over to see my dad in the bath? <laughs> That's very quick, actually, isn't it? Yeah. It took me four years. <laughs> really? Was he yeah. doing looking at my dad? <laughs> <laughs> The question is, what was your dad doing in his box? <laughs> <laughs> Friday night's Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> it's to do with that thing on the comet. That thing... <laughs> that, 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 that's that's your correct answer. <laughs> it's to do with that thing it's on the thing. comet. There's I Pen can't believe that this is the right station. answer. Oh, my <laughs> God. Go on. It, it's basically, uh, how long was the uh, space probe that landed on the comet asleep for? Absolutely right. Thank you very much. Andy Parsons. <laughs> well done, Matt. The question I was looking for is, how long had the Philae lander spacecraft spent in hibernation after it landed on a comet in November last year? After seven months of receiving no contact from Philae, the European Space Agency revealed over the weekend that the probe had made contact with scientists again. Fantastic, wasn't it? Because basically the signal apparently takes half an hour to get to Earth and the battery lasted... 87 seconds. That is a bit like being on O2 with an iPhone 4, that, isn't it? <laughs> the um, tweet that was sent from the Philae account, which has said, Hello Earth, can you hear me? Oh. If I was in charge hmm? of the Twitter account, I'd have just put, Oh shit, aliens. <laughs> I can't believe he's got reception in space. I can't even get Wi Fi in my kitchen. <laughs> that as a British probe, it was like, it didn't do anything for seven months, got a little bit of sunshine and was like, oh, got all excited. I reckon he's got, like, a little knotted hanky on his head <laughs> up there, organising some rounders and a barbecue. He'd be complaining about the heat soon. Oh, it's oh, too yeah. hot. Yeah. Too hot now. <laughs> We're just at the exact correct moment where it's just the right amount of heat for... <laughs> oh, God, I'm tired of barbecues now. <laughs> <laughs> it reported back that the temp average temperature of the comet, minus 50 degrees. So apparently FIFA are thinking of awarding it the 2026 <laughs> I looked up at the plough the other day and I thought to myself, I really regret lying down in this field. <laughs> <laughs> what they said, though, didn't they? What they said was it was essentially like chucking a washing machine out of an airliner and trying to land it 
on the space the size of Regent's Park. Now, I used to live near Regent's Park in Camden, and a lot of the back gardens did have washing machines in them. <laughs> so I reckon they've had a few cracks at this experiment. <laughs> it looks well technical. Is it a Dyson? <laughs> Who's taking that photo? That's what I want to know. That's not actually a photograph of him there. That's, it's actually that's got a selfie stick, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> they have discovered, though, that apparently that the, the water on the comet is not the right water. No. It's not the right water no. as no. Earth. It's not and, the right water. And you think, how does that work? Did they find fizzy instead of still? <laughs> what is going on? Yeah. But how oh. different can the water be? Can you still have a bath in it? Yeah. Yes. You can can you bath still it? see Rob's dad in there? Yes. <laughs> If, if I close my eyes, I can still see Rob's out in this. <laughs> How has the behaviour of Western tourists upset people in Malaysia recently? Oh, this is the girl that I'm um, yes. stripped off on top of the mountain. Yes, it's oh. Escape from Boobs Mountain. Uh, <laughs> well, she said that they didn't know that it was an issue, but you just presume that when you go to places that is... Like, if I walk into St Paul's Cathedral, I'm not looking for a sign with, like, a penis with a red cross through it. <laughs> I'm just going, there's, there's no they rule. don't want to see my cock. Yeah. <laughs> no That's... rule. I'm just swaying gently. I don't see it written anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you produce a rule book for me. <laughs> I'm stopping motioning like this. <laughs> it was basically, it wasn't there, six days between her getting her kit off and the earthquake. So, those gods, they took quite a long time to decide to be offended, didn't they? <laughs> I'm wondering if they spent a lot of that time just looking at the photos. <laughs> it has become a thing. I mean, this is, the, this is the, one of the photos taken of them. They're all doing it. It's a weird fight. trend, isn't it? We have, we have them up mountains, people do it. Yeah, all right. Yeah, that, that one was next, to, next to a canyon, champ. It's not going to impress, oh. right? <laughs> the, this is, you know, oh. that's, that's how it starts for a start. Right. Do you know, uh, they, they, they actually didn't know each other, they're just meeting for the first time. <laughs> hey, boy, bonjour, bonjour! <laughs> oh, I know, my washing machine is on a comet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, how is an Italian neuroscientist hoping to make medical history? This is brilliant. This, this is, is an absolutely fantastic this story. Is he is planning to give someone a head transplant, or to take someone's head off and transplant it onto another body. It's a bit ridiculous, though, isn't it? Like, how in demand are heads? <laughs> like, who's at home going, finally, I can get an head now, all these years? No, no, I think you mix up a head transplant and a body transplant. No one is going, if only my body had the head it deserved. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I am, I have a... <laughs> <laughs> You are quite you... ripped, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. I reckon he's on the flag. I reckon he's going to get two people who are quite similar, get one of them, get rid of the other one, and just do like a little dotted line <laughs> around the neck. <laughs> You've done it. Nailed it. <laughs> you would never, ever want to be a head donor, would you? Because <laughs> that just sounds like a PC job title for a prostitute, doesn't it? That's <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think, and I know little enough about the sex industry, that they regard it as a donation. All right. Uh, but you are giving head. Yes, you are. But there is also. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Of course. Yes. I, I don't know. I can't speak. For the sex industry, maybe they go, the head is free. It's the companionship oh. you're paying for. <laughs> uh, if you hadn't seen somebody for ages, yeah. and whenever you had seen them, they'd always been in a wheelchair, and then you suddenly saw them walking along the street, you'd be quite freaked out by that, wouldn't you? Right? But it would not be as freaky as if you thought somebody had died and then you saw them walking along the street with exactly the same tattoos as the person who died. That would freak you right out, wouldn't it? <laughs> there would be an element of you would want... I, I, you know, I don't know if you can mm. request no tattoos, though. Uh, You'd wake up and be like, why is that hello, pierced? Hello, I'm not, I'm not married to Mabel. <laughs> what the hell is this doing here? This is going to be I'm awkward I, I, uh, I, I, when I, I go home. I love that your go-to name for a wife was Mabel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually, it's actually Mary, I thought it was too Irish. Uh, I thought, oh, I better pick something English. Mabel, that's a standard English Have name. Have you met my beautiful wife, Mabel? Mabel. <laughs> if, you trans if you put a head on someone else's body, yep. are heads gender-specific? Do they have to go on the same...? Oh, that's a very interesting question. Because I was I've... thinking, you'd have to find the match, wouldn't you? Sometimes a head is much too large for a body. So, for example, if your head right. was to go... <laughs> Was the go on posh spice? That would look. <laughs> that would look that, ridiculous. That would be lolling. She'd be lolling. I, 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 I don't oh, know who, which of us it is. We'd be lolling ferociously. I, I would be having some confusing feelings looking at that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Who would you be blocking out? Who would you be blocking out? Seriously, Josh, be honest with me. Would you be blocking out me or Bosch in this situation? Or would it be like those superhero mashup toys? Uh, that you're going... Wait, which spice girl would they choose, then? Well, Bosch, I think. Well, no, well, no, they, they, they choose Scary, cos she's, like, you know... I, 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 don't, know, I don't think... Spice <laughs> Spice? I don't think they give you a catalogue of all of just the Spice Girls. I don't think it's... <laughs> oh, I totally misunderstood the story. <laughs> I don't think, oh, well, I need a new body. But well, these are your five exact <laughs> choices. <laughs> oh, that seems unusual. I, um, so I could choose one of the All Saints. Presumably, yeah. If, if you can it, remember their names. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <We're all talking. laughs> Essentially, that's what the sugar babes have been for about ten years anyway. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the point's going to Rob, Ellie and Andy. Now we play a round called Third Mock from the Sun. This game involves Ellie and Milton, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launch the Wheel of News, and whoever chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. OK, here we go. Let's have a look at the first topic. And the first subject is relationships. Ellie. So, I've got quite a close relationship with my sister, and um, she's got my little nephew, Henry, who is um, a prick. Um, <laughs> no, he is. Don't take his side. You haven't met him. Um, because before he came along, I was the youngest in the family. I was the baby of the family, which we all know is the socially acceptable way for saying, favourite! <laughs> a role I was born to play until my sister, Slaggy McSlaggerson, <laughs> got herself knocked up by some dude she had barely been married to for six years. <laughs> Suddenly, it was all about her and the baby within. Now, initially, naively, I did actually get quite excited about the pregnancy. Because I think, especially from, like, a female point of view, you wouldn't be human if you didn't get excited about your sister putting on a lot of weight. <laughs> <laughs> Had a lot of fun with that. Um, we did. I changed her ringtone to the sound of a large lorry reversing. <laughs> Just sisterly banter, really. Um, but the banter stopped when the baby came because suddenly it was all about him. No one paid me any attention anymore. Like, I don't know if you've ever, ever had like um, sort of a family dinner with a small child around. It's a nightmare. There's food being thrown, there's shit everywhere, there's tits hanging out. <laughs> you name it, I tried it, still nothing. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Okay, that leaves us with Milton. Let's see what you've been given. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is entertainment. <laughs> I'm reading a book at the moment. It's called The Anticlimax. The first part is good. <laughs> <laughs> I see Rihanna had to cancel a concert because she got salmonella. Ella. Ella. <laughs> I also see that down by the Thames they're making another wheel, this time dedicated to Mary Poppins, called the London Um Diddle 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 Um Diddle Eye. <laughs> <laughs> My grandmother, she got her scarf caught in one of those Ferris wheels, uh, but she did regain consciousness. After all, what goes around? <laughs> I was in a nativity play once. I was the man who scares the children because he comes into the hall on the wrong day to play badminton. <laughs> <laughs> Lionel Richie says hello, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> the other day I saw a sheep pole dancing uh, in a kebab shop. Thank you very much. Okay. Get that round of points. Let's go. Let's go back. <laughs> Our next round is called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. So, what's going on here? <laughs> Do you know that thing when a dog's eaten a bee? <laughs> David Cameron going, six pages, is this really the complete list of taxpayers in Greece? <laughs> <laughs> is it David Cameron can almost smell the shit coming off the Tory manifesto? <laughs> I got a bit political, didn't I? <laughs> is he looking at the tea menu and he's saying, I'll have the millionaire's shortbread, or as I call it, shortbread? <laughs> 
Cameron upset to see no Dizzy Rascal on the karaoke songbook? <laughs> He does a very good bonkers, actually. He's a very good bonkers. Is it Cameron orders eat and mess for dessert and for the country? <laughs> so, yeah, you're right. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, it's... Oh. When, has when Rob has Beckett it... had a head transplant? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a tiny dick now, but I love politics. <laughs> <laughs> third joke that yeah. you're going to do about... <laughs> oh, 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 God. Yeah. Oh, Cameron preparing to sell NHS at auction. It's <laughs> 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 fun doing politics, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> what a time to be alive. <laughs> Is that Cameron checking the TV listings going, Rob Beckett's on Mock the Week, that's the end of me then? <laughs> <laughs> His, his hard-hitting caustic satire is finishing me. <laughs> finishing me. He's if mocking you, me on that week. Uh, if, you, if the joke's not good enough, just put your hand up in the air. Yeah. <laughs> Am I right, brothers? Am I right? Yeah. 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 My dad's in the bath and I got some politics. Let's go! Yeah. Is it Cameron reading a note that just says, David, this is the only way I could speak to you. I haven't heard from you since May the 7th. Call me <laughs> Nick XOXO. <laughs> Or is he fact just going, all right, it says here, Nick Clegg is in fact doing the Sheffield Panto at Christmas. That's what it says here. <laughs> He's bounced back. <laughs> this, I think, is Cameron at the G7, isn't it? It is, absolutely, yes. It's Cameron yeah. at the G7. Why is he having these high-level meetings? He's, he's trying to kind of get them to make some changes to the EU to convince... Because we're doing this whole EU vote. I think the EU is misbranded. No one would want to leave if they called it the League of Legends. <laughs> <laughs> if they said, "Do you want to leave the League of Legends?" I go, "No, mate. I'm the chairman." <laughs> We've got to vote again already. Only vote. I'm gonna start feeling. Like... It's in two years' time. Oh, I'm gonna start feeling like a pedo <laughs> waiting around school halls eight in the morning. <laughs> You don't have to wait around for two years. I, in fact, I strongly. I'm really into politics now. <laughs> I'm going to think about it. What does he ask? Well, what's, what's he it? wants? Major concessions, mainly on free movement of people, on immigration, doesn't yes. he? Yes, but that's um, and that's, that is essentially the. The whole point of it is that you can't, yeah. yeah, and you can't deny benefits to people because you've got to treat them as your own citizens, right? So how is he going to stop European well, immigrants coming into the country? Well, Dara, you've been claiming off us for ten years, mate. <laughs> <laughs> All missing. right, don't cheer that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, finally somebody has a nerve to say it. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Giant Head Posh Leg. Uh, <laughs> it'd be brilliant if you kit made you a, a campaign issue. <laughs> Stop this man <laughs> uh, for too long. Your air is human. Uh, uh, <laughs> got a big picture of me. So, yeah, yeah. A big Cameron picture of me going like that. Mm. Yeah. This man, bam, 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 picture of me. Mm. Yeah. Just grabbing all your cash. <laughs> <laughs> He's visiting. Tura, lura, lura. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty years ago, it was all Warsaw Pact, Warsaw Pact, but now it's empty. If we, if we leave Europe, we'll have to pay more for Kinder Eggs. Because <laughs> they're going up as it is. Yeah, I know. It's like you, know you know, if we leave Europe, we'll get the Kinder Egg and we'll open up and there'll be no toy. <laughs> oh, my oh, gosh. My. I didn't, oh, that was, oh, I did not expect that I to have quite oh, the no, effect it has, right? Oh. Wow, so, somebody just cancelled Christmas for the real <laughs> Well, what we could do is deliver France an ultimatum saying that if we don't get our way, we'll call Greg's a patisserie. Another <laughs> <laughs> news. Why is an American civil rights campaigner in trouble this week? Basically, uh, she, she's been pre pre pretending to be black, hasn't she? She, she basically, is. She was born of white parents. There's childhood pictures of her with fair skin and fair hair. Yep. Mean, she's essentially the opposite of Michael Jackson, isn't she? <laughs> she's gone on a very different journey, I'll give you that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that is Rachel Dolezal as a teenager, I presume. That's about 17, 18, I think. The, uh, and then she, here she is today, <laughs> where she now claims to be black. 
uh, and well, works for the NAACP, which is a, like a, a, a totally American right. She doesn't actually look black in the second shot. There's, she looks orange. And she's now resigned her job, but maybe Atomic Kitten can take her on. You never know. <laughs> it, could, it, could be, look, it could be a Netflix PR thing. You know, it could be Orange is the New Black. It might be the... Uh, <laughs> the uh, <laughs> you hope it's that. Yeah. It might be a, just a little lie that's got out of hand. I mean, we've all lied, like, in the past, mm. to sort of, like, impress people. I once told a girl I was Swedish, right, which was hard to keep up. Now we're married. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm going Harry, I'm darling, going, Exactly. Harry. I'm going Ikea three times a week just for new words. <laughs> <laughs> She's kind of lied about her race to get this job or whatever, potentially. I don't know what I'd do in that. Like, if my agent came to me and said, they're going to recast the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, I've got you an audition for the lead role. <laughs> I don't know whether I'd do it. You want to be in pole dark, mate. That's the one for you. <laughs> <laughs> Take your shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> Take your shirt off. Thought you'd never ask. <laughs> you sound like Rob Beckett's dad. If this makes the edit, he's be loving this. Down the pub going, it was me in the bar. <laughs> <laughs> So she's, she, no, she's, she has resigned her job, by the way, this, this lady who, who pretended to be black and was dobbed in by her parents, which is a bit oh, that. So really? Sad. The, uh, yes, they did. They, they, uh, her estranged parents, which is, yeah, because apparently, yeah. I love the word estranged. I've always loved estranged. When I was a kid, and they'd say, uh, oh, and his estranged wife, I just presume it meant strange. Have you met your wife? Hello! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> <laughs> Is she able? That's what I say about me. Do you remember when this show was about the news? It used to be. Used to, people complain it's not topical enough. <laughs> Fuck you. Right. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay. At the end of that round, the points go to Josh Ewan Melton. Now we come to scenes we'd like to see, so if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our <laughs> panellists can come up with. Okay, here we go. The first subject is... Things you wouldn't hear on a survival show. This is the most terrifying animal you can see in the wild. It has the body of posh spice... <laughs> If you're on an expedition, you must always make sure you boil all the water. Now, this can really slow you down if you come to a lake. <laughs> it's been 17 days since my last proper meal, and I am beach body ready, bitches. <laughs> Bear, are you related to George Foreman grills? <laughs> I've not had a bath for days on end. And that's because Rob Beckett's dad <laughs> is in there. There is barely any water here, so we've been collecting our urine. But this morning, some of it was gone. And that is taking the piss. <laughs> <laughs> Spent three days in the jungle with nothing to eat but raw caterpillars. I remember the moment I walked back into civilization. Whew, there are a few butterflies in my stomach, I can tell you. <laughs> when I was thirsty, I was forced to drink my own urine. I'm now hungry and dreading dinner. <laughs> uh. And when you're in the wild, you've got to remember what you learn at Scouts. Don't tell anyone our little secret. <laughs> well, night is falling, it's raining, and I'm in the shelter, but it still feels dangerous here. There are six teenagers staring at me, and the bus doesn't arrive for 20 minutes. <laughs> if you suddenly see a bear extremely close to you, the best thing to do, stand stock still. Pull down your trousers and just let it have sex with you. <laughs> ah. 
on the men's island, Derek's drinking coconut water because Derek's a hipster twat. <laughs> After three months totally alone on the island, it's amazing that John hasn't gone mad. Isn't that right, John? Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> so, I've managed to make a raft to escape the island by smashing up some boats. <laughs> The next topic is unlikely things to hear over at Tannoy. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Waitrose, you smug, rich pricks. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. Would somebody please go to the power tools aisle and get me a drill? <laughs> If you see an unattended bag, please don't report it. Remember, you're in world of luggage. <laughs> Good evening, ladies. Top Shop will be closing in five minutes. Please make your way to the till, unless you're over 30, in which case, piss off to MS, you ancient old hag. <laughs> This is an announcement for the front desk of the swimming baths. Could doctor someone's done a shit in the pool? <laughs> Please come to reception. <laughs> Would the couple having sex in aisle two... Please stop. Spillage in aisle two... <laughs> The 1625 has unfortunately been cancelled and has been replaced by a replacement bus service. EasyJet would like to apologise <laughs> for all passengers who are going to Greece. I only work in the post office for the crumpet. Watch this. Widow number two, please. <laughs> Tonight's performance of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, the part of the child catcher, will be played by a 1970s TV presenter. <laughs> Welcome to Sexist Airways. I'm just going to pop on the uh, seatbelt sign for a moment because we're swapping to a lady pilot. <laughs> We are now coming into land in Russia, where the local time is 1956. <laughs> Welcome aboard the one-way saga service special to Switzerland. Just <laughs> <laughs> trying to have a laugh. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Attention to the submarine crew of HMS Nando's. Be careful not to burn your eyes on the peri periscope. <laughs> Lost children can be found at the Lost Children tent. If they're not claimed by the end of the day, they will be destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Megabus. Things haven't worked out quite as well as you were hoping, have they? <laughs> Welcome to the sexist supermarket. <laughs> Check out number three. <laughs> okay, I gave that round of points going to Josh Hewitt Milton. <laughs> and that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Eddie Taylor, and Rob Beckett. Commiserations to Josh Willicum, Hugh Dennis, and Milton Jones. Thank you for watching. I'm Darrell Breen. Good night.